This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hello, my gorgeous listeners of my stunning podcast, Senior Superlatives. This is just a little, a little trigger warning up top as this episode contains discussion of eating disorders and drug use. And I just want to let you guys know that. And I hope you enjoy this episode. I had such a fun time recording it. And I hope you have a fun time listening to it. If I could escape and recreate a place as my own world and I, and I could be your favorite girl forever, perfectly together and tell me, boy, now wouldn't that be sweet? If I could escape, escape. You know, I was debating singing it seriously for all of you classmates that listen to this show, but then I was like, no, you know, that feels too vulnerable. But maybe one day I'll sing it genuinely. Maybe I'll like bring out the ukulele and really pluck away and like, you know, I don't know how to play the ukulele. That's a lie. And Tevi is truly telling me not to. Wow. (laughs) Shooting down my creative endeavors. Oh, my God. That was Sweet Escape, by the way, by the one and only Gwen Stefani. Um, The year is 2008. We're back in 2008. An amazing year for all of us. What was happening in 2008? I know we've been here before, but we're back. And I'm not I'm not talking music. I'm not talking hits. I'm not talking TV. I'm not talking movies. I'm talking fashion trends, honey, okay? Number one, we have the baby doll tops over the short shorts. I never participated in this trend, but I do remember it. We have oh a gorgeous God. photo of Hilary Duff rocking the trend. Number Number two, short formal sack dress. I did have like two of these. Okay. Number three, black tights with everything. Yeah, that was a real moment. That was a real moment. Black tights with everything. All of you guys can also look this up on cosmopolitan.com, not sponsored by, but they can. Tight tanks over mini skirts, okay? Now, this is a trend that I actually kind of do participate in now. I'm not going to lie to you. I think it's kind of hot and I love being slutty. Liquid leggings never went away fully. Like, it never went away. I feel like Lisa Rinna still wears these you know so therefore it's still popping this go-to combo of a short jacket long top liquid leggings whoever wrote this is funny because this is actually very 2008 to me the cropped jacket and Lisa Rinna looks like she makes that whole outfit exactly the crinkly satin dress I think this is cute I would wear this now um oh I actually talk about this in my hour because it's the most aggressive bad trend of all time. The fringed moccasin boot. Mm. Remember when every I own a pair of those. Yes, every white girl under the sun was wearing a Minnetonka boot. We all need to apologize I'm for Irish. that. I'm Irish. I'm yeah. Irish and I was walking around with moccasins on. Awful, truly awful. Spray tans this never went away. What are we talking about? Spray tans never run away. Busty baby doll dresses, you I know. I wish, I wish. With the help of a doctor, I could get there. Tiered ruffle mini dress. That seems too specific. That is Taylor Swift in a maternity dress. <laughs> Extra wide waist belts, this was a thing. My sister really did this trend. I mean, yeah, it's um, it's something that your mom would put on you before you would go out. Yeah, like a cinched waist. You know, I I had a tagline when I worked in retail, how to take an outfit from day to night. You belt it with wedges, honey, okay? Um, my sister had a thick Chloe leather belt, and I remember being like 18, being like, that is beautiful. Um, preppy headbands, that never went away. That never went away, and I, I had a few of those that I had to give away because of my big old head. Yeah, your huge head. My huge Didn't want to say anything. I know. <laughs> Barely balancing. Boho headbands? Okay, so this actually is on Misha Barton, who I spent, not kidding, woke up the other morning to her on my search history late at night. I was just concerned about her. I was looking up her most recent project. And that's fair. To, and it's fine. Wow, junior prom realness. I mean, you guys, I'm, we, we could talk about this the that whole entire Aubrey episode. Day, am I wrong? I think, is that? Uh, from Dan. Uh, yes, it is. Yes, yeah. it is. It's truly See her standing from a mile in front. away. 
<laughs> Standing in front of a Danity Kane staff and repeat. The thing about Aubrey O'Day, which we forget, is that she's a good singer. I mean, is she, Aubrey O'Day is amazing. Amazing, I will amazing. never forget watching her and making the band thinking she has what it takes. She has what it takes. I had no idea that she would date Donald Trump Jr. years later no. and then out Ivanka as a lesbian and say she was on the DL. I am obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> um... This is this list is actually incredible. So we do have to complete it. We only have three more. We only logs. have three more. Please keep going. Um, this one's really important because I participated in this as well. Fringed vests. Let's look at that. That is a Kim Kardashian is that Kim in K? a fringed, fringed vest. I've never seen anything like that. I don't know if I even went there. But my, I. My mom sent me a fringed vest for my 19th birthday when I was in college. <laughs> we forget how much our moms misled us. I know. <laughs> this hat. Oh, Fergie Ferg. I also had one. Fergie Ferg in a fedora. Like this on the ver on the crown of her head. That that hat is <laughs> that hat is holding on for dear An life. An angel dropped that hat under yeah. her head. I mean. It's being held on by, but a, but a cough would knock that thing off. <laughs> um, this high waisted um, hot pants. Remember these? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love a high waist. That was before I had Spanx. I had high waist. Yeah. And you know what? The last one that we're gonna end on is another. I think. I think it's. Um, I don't know who this is actually. But this is a wild look, and I wish this look was famous enough because this would actually be an amazing Halloween costume. Off the shoulder big tees. <laughs> Who is Another this? Aubrey, is O'Day Aubrey O'Day classic. Wearing a, I would, first of all, I need to find out where she purchased this. It's an off the shoulder big tee that says bad girls love Obama, but it's a slutty <laughs> dress. Yeah. And then she proceeds to date a Trump. She is just she's a complicated, nuanced us. creature. She's confusing us. She pro she posts pro democracy stuff. To be fair, she regrets dating Donald Trump Jr. Do you Jr. think we could get her on the pod? Ab Greta, <laughs> absolutely. Aubrey O'Day. You know, I she know she clearly is okay with doing press. Yeah, we need to get her on the pod. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Okay, so I, I haven't even introduced you. The name of my amazing guest, the person that's joining me today, to to today, I can't talk. Joining me today is Carolina Barlow. Thank you so much, Greta Titelman, for oh having my God. me. And also, by the way, we're in Malibu, California. That's yes, what, we that's are. where you were the in high school. The best place on earth. You were in Malibu, California, listening to Danity Kane, oh my kind of fulfilling all of my high school dreams because I grew up on the East Coast and I always fantasized about having my OC. Yeah. I fantasized about the beach. I, it's why I desperately wanted to come to school on the West Coast and then kind of sort of did that for a year and then went back East. But all to say, you went... You're the second person on this podcast that's gone to Ma Malibu High. Yes, you had an actual celebrity on this podcast who went to Malibu High. I am. You're an actual I, celebrity. I'm a celebrity adjacent. I know celebrities, um, and I've um, like sharded in front of celebrities, but that's good. I'm not an actual celebrity. And I will say though about the OC you mentioned, I actually my friend, oh my friend's family owns the house the OC was shot at. Which one, Summer's the house? The Cohens. The Cohens house. So literally, we would be drunk in her kitchen, Lindsay who's definitely listening. Um, and we would look around saying, I can't believe we're here. That's this crazy. I remember started. they had that big island in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the back house, is that back house real where Ryan lived? That back house was a set, but the pool area is real. Is real. Yeah. Gorgeous. I know. Lucky it was a magical friend. time. It was a magical place. But how did her, I wonder how her family dealt with that because like you need to kind of move out of your house. They pay yeah. you a, they pay a, you a an nice. They pay you an exorbitant amount. Well, Listen, people I, th are back then. They did transpose shitting everywhere. You know what? No, I read. I heard about a house though. They made like half a million dollars for these people to shoot in like a couple of months. Yeah, I mean that, but that's but, like your mortgage. Yes, it is, but that's for people where they actually like go into the interiors that's and true. you genuinely need to like move your shit out and like they take care of all of that. But like that's a fucking pain in the ass. Oh my gosh, have you been in one of those film shoots? People are shitting on the floors, pissing on the walls. I was just I was just shooting a show. Yeah. This last week in New York, we were shooting at a mansion in Great Neck, a crazy huge mansion in Great Neck. Yeah. And I was looking around and I was just like, people are brave. <laughs> and people are disgusting. Also, I'm such like I'm like I'm not a rule follower, but I am when it comes to like 
putting when, your when, socks when on. I see when I see like a, a sign on the wall that's like no crew beyond this point I'm the person that's like well we can't go back there I'm like I needed to put a mic pack on and one person was like no 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 let's let's go back here and then I was like right. but we're not supposed, we're not supposed to, to. <laughs> I'm like in this fancy house yeah but um I will say Abe and I have been asked if we would allow them to use our exterior. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, the other day, someone actually came up to me and handed me a little piece of paper because I always give you a little piece of paper letting you know about the project. Right, right, right. And it was a show that I had auditioned for four times. That is cruel. And I looked at it and I said – looked at the – Location scout, and I said, ha, ha, ripped it in front of him, and I said, You must be fucking joking. I said, Honey, if you would have given me the part, you could use the house. <laughs> you could have shot inside my mouth. Yeah, because I know that's your job. <laughs> <laughs> I know locations, casting, producing, it's all the fucking same. Don't lie to me. <laughs> I hope you gave him a slow clap. Wow. Yeah, I was Congratulations. Like, you really stuck it to me, didn't you? And then I say, and by the way, don't even think about asking anyone else on the block. They already know what you guys have done to me. <laughs> um, anyway, we're in Malibu. Yes. Okay, so what's going on with you in high school? What What are you like? What like? What, do you have a clique? Are you artsy? What's going on? Because you, you did mention before you started recording that you grew up in Brooklyn. Yeah. And then you came here. Mm-hmm. So when did you move here and was that really crazy culture shock? Okay, so I grew up in Brooklyn at a really chic school called – St. Anne's, where Lena Dunham, Jemima Kirk went to school. Mm. It was a lot of really artsy fartsy kids. And I was kind of awkward. I wasn't cool. I was like desperately trying to be cool. My parents weren't quite in the income bracket that was going to support my standing anywhere Mm. in New York. So I was like dying for them to be like quipping so fucking poor. Right. You know? And it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Like pull it together. (laughs) Yeah. And they weren't doing that for me. So um, we moved to Malibu. They were flopping around. Um, And Malibu, I will say that I was not in a clique. I like to think of myself as. Wait, why did you, hold on. Yeah. Did your whole family move to Malibu? My, my mommy and me and my sister moved to Malibu. It was a very weird, random sequence of events. We wanted to move to California. We were sick of New York. We had friends in California. My mom grew up in Southern California. The best school, the best public school is in Malibu. Malibu High is a really good school. They actually really make you work hard, unfortunately. For me, I got an F in chemistry. Barely, barely passed, barely got out of that place, to be honest. Um, And did your parents get a divorce? They did. Mm. So, actually, let's dig into that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about flop. Did they get divorced? What, wait, so they got divorced when you were in middle school and then you moved to California? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. but That's hard. Middle school divorce is hard. Middle school divorce is so hard. But you know what's funny? You can really tell when someone hasn't been through anything when they're still talking about their parents' divorce. Like, yeah. It, like, you know when you're talking about your trauma and this happened and this happened and someone goes – well, when my parents divorce and you want to be like, grow up. Are you serious? Yeah. That's still your claim to fame? Yeah. You got to find something new. Get in line. Please. And it's long. Get in line and it's long. Yeah. Get in line. And actually think about it before you get in line because it's long. <laughs> um, Moving to Malibu, best decision my, my mom ever made. It was so much fun. I really, you know, the... you. You talk about those, like, beautiful girls who peaked in high school. That was, like, an insult. Like, Mm. oh, she peaked in high school. Mm -hmm. Or she's going to peak in high school. The rest of her life will be downhill. That was me. Like, I wasn't even one of the thotties in Malibu High, which there were a many. But what do you mean? Wait, what do you mean? You did not peak in high school. I I certainly did. No. I had more fun in high school than I, I may have for the rest of my life. Why? It was this like is so rare. I never hear this oh on the my show. God. Most fun ever. I had the best group of friends. We're all still pretty much friends. All you know how some of the funniest people you know decide not to pursue comedy. Yeah, but they're just situationally the funniest people you know. And you know what? I love those people. The best. Because sometimes I think to myself, "What is so broken inside of me right. that I just can't be?" The funny friend that has a stable job. Right, 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 right. Why you do know. I need people to film my podcast? Yeah, why do I need people to tell? Why, why, why do, do I, I need podcast? the world? I have two podcasts. Why? Yeah. Why do I, why would I even need one? Why do you, it's, at this point, it's embarrassing. <laughs> at this point, it's like the Scarlet Letter. Like, 
Uh, honestly, obviously, like historically, it's been bad to wear a badge of anything identifying your mm-hmm. like religion or gender. But people in LA should start wearing like something to Ev- identify. It would be everyone <laughs> that they have or are developing a podcast. I would have, have to do that too. developing guesting. Yeah. Yes, you know? guess, well, guesting. But guesting. here's the thing about me, and I'm going to be honest with all of my listeners. Right. I don't listen to podcasts. You know what? That's so funny. I can't listen to podcasts. Frankly, I want to say it's because of my ADHD, another thing that's a great thing to add to your trauma list. Um, but I really um, – I, I can't – keep up with them i can't follow people talking i, I fall asleep sorry i can't listen i can't yeah, listen you can't listen that's yeah. good yeah, yeah yeah and you shouldn't i can't I, listen I to a full think... song you're asking me to listen to a full podcast yeah you're out, you're out of your mind. mind i know i i'm in our i'm i'm one minute 15 into songs next oh one minute i get it's sort of like uh taking a hot sip of a drink and about two seconds gonna be lukewarm yeah you know but you know what i like that I like when it's lukewarm. I don't like hot drinks. I uh, oh okay, literally yeah, <laughs> literally it's hot, hot, hot on my tongue. You know, thank you. I have a phobia of burning my mouth. Whenever I burn my mouth, you know how you still want to get mad at your mom about stuff that's not her fault. Yeah, I'm already mad at my mom. You should I'm like be. what the fuck? I just burned my mouth. It was way too hot. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now we're in Malibu. We're we're having the best time of our life. Best time of my life. So what exactly like? Because it sounds like you desperately wanted to be cool in middle school. Yeah. But but because your parents were, you know, you know flops, flops, you couldn't make it. You couldn't hack it in yeah. the St. Anne's system. Yeah. So then you started going to Malibu High when you were a freshman? Yeah. Sophomore. 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 Come to Malibu That's High. a tough transition time because a lot of people think, you know, I was a, I was a uh, transfer student too in high school. Okay. And – it's hard, like yeah, it because is. people forage, forage, forge, forge, not forage. They do, they do. They forage mushrooms. She's not wrong. They forge tight, tight friendships. Yeah. yeah, because high schoolers are very dramatic. You know what I mean? And intense. High schoolers are the kind of thing where, like, you are my best friend, and when you decide that with someone, yeah, that Multiple bond times. is stronger than my marriage. You know. It really is. It's um, it's a, a delusional bond that you can maintain for a really long time. I had multiple of those. I was really Ferris Bueller popular. I was friends with the jocks. I was on How the water How did you polo become team. popular? This is what I want to know. Um, well, I'm – listeners can probably tell by now, uh, like super empathy off the charts, very mm. funny. Like if you're watching this, you can tell that like I'm easy Hilarious. on the eyes. Yeah. And – but I will say when you arrive to Malibu High – I was coming from New York where I'm not kidding, like in New York, like in Brooklyn, you can clean up with wearing like your dad's t shirt and right. like a tight pair of jeans. Yeah. I come to LA, these girls are models. Yeah, yeah. Everyone has skin the color of olive oil, hair the color of like Honey. the sun. I was astonished. Sometimes just for kicks, I show people the girl I lost prom queen to, runner up for prom queen. We can talk about it later. Yeah. And it's she looks like she was designed by Putin to distract us from the war in Ukraine. Like she is so hot. It's it hurts my it hurts me. It hurts me. She's so hot that I recently found out she had a kid and I was mm. excited for her to have gained weight. That's good. I was like, thank God. That's Someone had to put a dent in that thing. Yeah. But, but then, um, you know, it's more disturbing. Then you, like, look her up and she you looks see even better. Her tits exactly. got huge. Yeah. I know. I know. Exactly. I put it off. But, um, yeah, I just uh, – no, no, no. I, I, I did a lot of activities. Mm. I went out for the swim team, went out for the water pole team. That's in, Those water sports are intense there. They're, and also, um, I'll say this. They – I um I don't have any boobs and I ha- I can get strong very quickly so I, I suddenly became uh hyper masculine like my back grew broader Whoa. arms grew tits got smaller naturally wow I just like became a jock for a second that's hot is it I don't know we that I wasn't really like catching any dick at that point and I was then, gonna say were you fucking in high school. Okay, when I did start fucking in high school, junior year, again, this is where it's going to sound crazy, but I had, like, some of the best sex of my life in high school. Shut up. That is antithetical to what this podcast stands I for. I had the best time ever. You're lying. I swear to God. So I what did- you, Okay, hold on. Let me let me just pause you. Yeah. So on this podcast, 
Right. The You're talking ethos. about you a loser in no. high school and no, no, it was no, no, hard. No. Okay. The ethos of this podcast. Uh-huh. Really like rule of, I mean, to quote Matt and Bowen, rule, rule of, of culture, culture. Rule of culture on this podcast. Yeah. Sex was bad in high school. High school sex, teen sex is bad, period. Period. You are not having good sex. I do not believe you. You now need to elaborate to me okay. on. You're the only person in, who else said, oh, Tevi had good high Tevi school had sex? Good high school sex. <laughs> so you understand it can happen. I think Once so. in a blue moon, listen, I was, I'll paint the scene. I went to rehab for, if you can't tell by now, since I've mentioned weight only five times, I had an intense eating disorder. So that became my brand for a little bit. Went to, was sent away to bad girl camp. What it do, was, were you, was this sophomore year or was this it junior was year? junior year I come back and all of a sudden it it really did impact the rest of my life in the best way possible where you I, I go through, through such intense therapy that I come back thinking not just like I'm okay I think like I might be the hottest person of all time yeah. like I have this crazy <laughs> self-esteem which brings me to my first boyfriend who was 20 years old how did you meet him <sighs> Gosh, this is so dark. I hosted the talent show. Not a big deal. Um, and a talent show for the public or for your for high school? For high school. For, yeah. And a 20-year-old was in attendance. A tw- the 20-year-old was the judge because he had won when he was in high school. I see. He was the judge. What was his talent? He was a very talented drummer. Okay. Yeah. And you don't think of the older guy hitting on – when you're in high school and an older guy is hitting on you, you don't think that's – that sucks for him. That's kind of sad. You think like, that's oh my God, yeah. I am. So you're 16. He's 20. I'm 16 when I meet him. Yeah. yeah. And we, he just happened to have a humongous penis. Mm. And I end up losing my virginity to him, which whenever I'm like, oh, that guy was, ooh, I still think like I do owe him a lot because he was so good sexually that he like opened up my door to have... Being able to have, like, an amazing sex life and, like, know what works for me in my future. Wow. I know. Okay. That's positive. I wasn't a very good girlfriend, too. You know, you always think, like, the older guy is, like, he wasn't a great boyfriend, but I was a real uh, cheater. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. What's the word for? Cheater. I wasn't actively cheating on him. And this is the worst part, weirdly, is that I felt like I don't want to cheat on him. So what I would do is call him. Leave him a voicemail breaking up with him and then, and then go out and, like, have sex with a rando. How long were you guys together for? Ooh, like a year and a half That's on a and off. Long a long time for a 20-year-old and a 16-year-old Well, this date. is the thing is, like, good dick is a prison. It is. And you can't stop coming back to it, especially when um, you find out that having sex with other people is, like, fine. Mm-hmm. But when you have sexual chemistry with someone, mm-hmm. you know. What happened to him? I think he became Christian mm. and with a capital C. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. last time I saw him online, he had grown his hair out very long. Okay. And I wish him all the best. I, I, um, yeah, yeah. So then. Some people don't leave Malibu. That's the tricky thing about Malibu. It's, Some people it's stay. It's a vortex. Yeah. Um, so. Was he you're the one person that you had had good high school sex with or were there others to follow? Because this kind of falls into my theory because technically he was he not in high, high school. school. That's true. That's a really good point. And the funny thing is, is that I was mainly sleeping with older men in high school. Wait, that's not true. Okay, so this guy, my uh, my landlord, my my mom lived in the trailer park in Point Doom Club. Which I've got to give a shout out to because the, I, what a I, great – The I Point Doom Club. I fucked a guy in – The Point Doom Club. The Point PDC. Club, yep. Yeah. So that's where I lived. Um, me and my sister had so much fun there. My sister was banned from the hot tub um, for having maybe too much fun there. Mm. And um, my landlord, our my family's landlord had a son – who happened to be extremely attractive. And when I met him, he was like this tiny, like skinny, tiny. He was like this skinny raver kid. And I think he was like my longest running sexual relationship. He was two years, a year or two younger than me. Mm. And um, obviously like the fact that his mother controlled our housing was like a nice power dynamic. And yes, it is. Um, I once thought I was smoking weed with him. Didn't know that I was actually smoking heroin with him. Mm. And um, tale as old as time. A tale as old as time. 
got lost in the Point Doom Club like I never have before and which is actually kind of impossible to do. Yeah. But spent about an hour in what felt like Pan's Labyrinth and finally found my door. But um, he also some of the best sex of my life. Not even kidding. We wow. slept together through like my 20s. Love that. Yeah, it was nice. But then he slowly started getting muscly mm. until he did reach the point of bodybuilder. Oh. And I had to, you know, jump you a know, few stages before that. I too have a history with <laughs> having sex with the guy who became a bodybuilder. It's so crazy. <laughs> the guy who I lost my virginity to. Became a bodybuilder. Is now a full on bodybuilder who breeds <laughs> yes. Dobermans. And he lives on the island of Nantucket. <laughs> wow. Yes. And the funny thing about those details is that they, you know they're true just because that is such a specific person that, like, obviously there's a bodybuilder out there who lives in Nantucket and breeds Dobermans. But here's the thing. He actually came in clutch, clutch handy, like, seven or eight years ago. Actually, yeah, seven or eight years ago. I was on, I was on Nantucket. In my car, we were driving onto a beach, got stuck in like a sand pit, couldn't get out. All of the tow companies were busy dealing with everybody else because it was like 4th of July weekend. And the wait would have been like four hours. So I called him and I knew he had a Jeep with a tow. And I called him and I was like, hey, remember me? Like, can you tow me out of this? We used to fuck. I yeah. need help. And he yeah. did. And he had two Dobermans going crazy. Being like, <laughs> like crazy in like the cage of his oh Jeep. Oh, my God. And he towed us out. Towed us out. Literally like gave me a peace sign and that was it. And I was like, okay. Was he good in bed? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I am. Uh, no. I mean, I'm. No, right. he wasn't. There's like I a sweet spot him. with bodybuilders right before they become a real bodybuilder, though. Yeah. And then they're, they're like Magic Mike for a second. Yeah. And then they keep going, which you got to stop. I was really into him because he was, a, at the time when I met him, he was a surfer. He was oh, dirty yeah. blonde. That's he wore really like hot. hemp necklaces with like blown glass beads yeah, on them. Yeah, that's Malibu. That's Malibu for he, you. Um, I lied to him and I told him I was older than I was and that I was Good that I was not a virgin. He was 16, I was 14, very oh young. Gosh. Um so when he was under the impression that I wasn't a virgin, he, he was like, proceeded to sex. fuck me. Not like tenderly have sex right, with like right, right, a right. young virgin. Yeah. He truly broke the hymen. The hymen. Yeah. Even though I didn't bleed. You know how everyone's like, oh, my God. I, I bled like a little bit. Like blood. Yeah, I didn't bleed. But I had the same kind of sex where it was like not – it was like normal sex. In retrospect, it's that line in Lady Bird where she was like, why am I on top? You're Like girls aren't supposed to be on the top their first time. Yeah. But men under the age of 50 aren't like very caring. Men <laughs> – Men under the age say, of, like, Rip Van Winkle. I was going to say, men under the age of, like, <laughs> men that are living. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, but I have realized that I'm, like, um, I, like, I even though I'm sexually attracted to men, like, hope to be with one, I, um, like, can't. I hate, like, talking to most of them. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm trying to find a financial advisor right now. Um, impossible. You impossible because find... I, I, I can't talk to men, like, I don't want them in my home. And they famously, it's illegal for women to be financial advisors. I'm like, women t do better statistically in math and science, graduate. Like, no one can help me with finances. I asked one woman. She said, not till December. I said, babe, question mark? Yeah, like what? Come on. Well, on that note, we're going to take a little break. And then we're going to be right back. Now we're back. Okay, so wow, I feel like we've covered so much ground, so much sex. We did talk about Hyman we and whether or not Hyman. we bled after losing our virginity. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you party in high school? Yes. Yeah. So I'm currently sober. I've been sober for like 10 years because famously I was that girl in high school and I was life of the party. And I, I usually say I'm sober because I've been to all of the parties. Mm. I've, I've seen it all. And that was like the high school best years of my life. I was – there's no better place to party. We were always in these rich kid mansions on the beach or in, you know, the Point Doom Club, which I've mentioned is magical. So, um, yeah, I was really concerned with, like, getting alcohol and um, – How did you get it? Well, the one thing about having an older boyfriend yeah, they can buy is that they can buy you alcohol and then you just have to like hang out with them while their mom watches Dancing with the Stars and mm -hmm. like drink tequila and eat some like birthday cake. They can also buy you Entenmann's. They can buy you lots of stuff. They can. 
And, um, yeah, we would go out all the time. Um, there, I, I was always hanging out with like these older super seniors. Mm. Yeah. That was like my crowd. So did you, okay, I need to rewind and then I'm going to ask mm-hmm. you a question about a quintessential high school moment for you. Yeah. But to just get my tracking right. Yeah. You transfer, you're a sophomore. You yeah. You start doing sports. A little bit, yeah. You become kind of jockey. Yeah, I quit because it messed up with my partying schedule. Okay, I was going to ask, like, yeah. how did did you party and do sports? No, you quit. Did you do any other extracurriculars in school? Like, I was were a, you theater a theater kid. Okay. Yeah. A theater yeah. person. Performer. Performer. Again, my theater friends were really – I'm my theater friends were really funny. And the thing about Malibu High – is that the choir kids were really hot. So I don't know if you know mm. the band Dawes. Yeah. Or, okay, so all of those guys are Malibu High kids. Mm. Like the singer of Dawes, famous Malibu High hunk, Taylor married, Goldsmith. Married to married Mandy Moore. Married to Mandy Moore, which was a huge moment for me and my friends. Yeah. Um, And the drummer, Gr- Griffin Goldsmith, one of my first crushes at Malibu High. The Morning Benders, that band to mm-hmm. all Malibu High kids. John Chu is the guitarist, this beautiful Asian boy who I am still, like, holding out hope for. Mm. Like, one of my best friends, if he came and walked through this door right now, which he could, and asked me to marry him, I would totally He'd marry John yes. Chu. Yeah. Well, where is he? Um, He's currently in a relationship that's, like, seven years long, mm. so. Okay, well, you know what? You know my what? parents were married for 28 years. Seven-year itch, yeah. Yeah. They divorced. That's why I said that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I figured. Imagine me circling back being like, did I tell you about my parents' divorce? <laughs> um, do you have like uh, – well, I, I need to know like what your like quintessential like high school story lore is. And then I also need you to tell me what happened when you lost prom queen. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. So that's kind of a two-hander. Oh, there were so many good high school mems. Um – I I um I mean it's so hard because you have to choose through all of the nights drinking. Um I know, but that's why like sometimes when I reflect, people complain the only complaint that Tevi ever tells me about because I obviously can't read reviews because I'm insanely sensitive and can't have anyone say anything mean to me. <laughs> um <laughs> Some some two people were like, why does Greta never share more about her high school experience? And it's like, well, because I was blackout. <laughs> because I was purely blackout for 90% of the time. That's the thing. I do remember truly, this sounds like such a movie moment, but I, my, I remember waking up on a lawn at like 11 p.m. And you know it's like bad when you're coming to at night. Mm-hmm. And my sister was above me, who is, she's only a year young, older than me, so we were at the same parties a lot. And she was like, hello. Mm-hmm. Like, where, I didn't know you were at this party and you're not, actually. You're like, you know, yeah, 60 feet from the door. Um, But I will say, the talent show mask it was called Mask, M-A-S-Q-U-E. Um, and it was – I had just come back from rehab. So, you know, How like – How long were you in rehab for? I was in rehab for about three months. It's a long time. It's a long time. Did I you go to rehab wonder, in Malibu? I didn't even I, – I mean, like, those those rehabs are so fancy. You have, like, Mel Gibson at those rehabs. Um, so, you know, who wants to be there? I was at rehab in Downey, California, mm. um, and it was, I mean- Was it for teens? It was for teens. It was for female teens with eating disorders. All the girls, again, super funny girls. They're girls who have problems are just quintessentially funny. Yes. Um, and- uh yeah we also their uh, girls become disgusting like living in a house together yeah. like especially when you you don't even know when you're gonna see a boy again. Well, people always say boys' bathrooms are so dirty, so gross. Have uh, you seen a girl's have bathroom? Have you ever gone into a sorority girl's bathroom? <laughs> so disgusting. It's so it's disturbed. Also, like <laughs> I remember before, I kind of feel like makeup remover. <laughs> I feel like makeup remover has become so much better, like, over oh, the past, God, yeah. like, 15 years. Where in high school, like, I remember I used to rub down my face with, like, Vaseline to yeah. like, get makeup off. And I didn't even wear that much face makeup. Mm-hmm. But when 
I would be friends with other girls that would wear a lot of concealer. These towels look like they take them and wipe their <laughs> shitty asses with them. Sometimes I would look at towels and I'd be like, is that shit or is that makeup? You know? And you know that when you look at that and you question. Yeah. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. Yeah. No. And the hair, the amount of hair we Sick. shed is just disgusting. Just wet hair on the shower walls. We had a karaoke machine that someone generously gifted the rehab with, but we were also bored out of our fucking gourds. We were not Did allowed you have to outside. Go to school? Like technically, but let's just say I, I failed my classes that year. Wait, what do you mean you weren't allowed outside? We're not allowed. Like, what are we going to do? We could go on monitored walks. A lot of us were very weak, not to. Humble brag, we were so thin, we were kind of weak. Mm. Um, so I was literally outside in a wheelchair getting wheeled around like Karen Carpenter herself. Oh my god, and that's like um also from Drop Dead Gorgeous. We were like everyone had like a little bit of a heart problem. We were there because it was like serious, but we had the funniest counselors, and there was also a bunch of uh possums in the neighborhood of Downey, California were sick while I was there. So they were out during the day. Mm. So you would see possums running around the neighborhood while you were in your wheelchair. Some, you know, my counselor had never seen a possum up close before. So she was pushing me towards the possum in my oh, wheelchair. And no. I was like, please take me away. Please take me away. But anyways, we did have this karaoke machine. And to make each other laugh in the house, because you would be um you know, the therapy, everything took place in the same uh, unit. Um, girls started farting <laughs> into the karaoke machine <laughs> microphone. <laughs> so you could hear it throughout the whole house. That's really No one funny. was even using the karaoke machine I for love anything that. else. Just except fart. farting into the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> one girl, uh, she was this great um, counselor we had. Uh, she tried using the karaoke machine microphone for karaoke on New Year's. Uh, she literally puts it close to her nose for one second, throws it away, ew. and just sits with her head in her hands. Oh, it's the just fart Just processing mic. what the fuck just happened. Oh. Yeah. So girls, all girls together, no guys to impress. Dirty. We were. I was literally told to wear makeup at a certain point. They were like, you need to actually think about your presentation <laughs> to the world. <laughs> Wait, take me back to mask. Mask. I'm sorry. So I'm back from rehab. I'm back with a vengeance. Um, my brand is she's mysterious. We didn't even know what was wrong with her. Is she doing okay? I host mask. Um, it was true. I I was just talking about this the other day because I'm obviously impacted by high school a lot. And I was saying it was the first time that I like realized I wanted to work in comedy because I was like workshopping, um, you know, all these bits we were mm. going to do for hosting. Mm -hmm. And it was really scary because no one watched the rehearsal. And so you're just hearing all these jokes bomb in an empty theater. And then when I actually hosted it, it was this beautiful return from like the like psych ward, essentially, with like the, you know, sick possums and visiting Karen Carpenter's house and everything to like everyone thinking that I was funny, which sounds really narcissistic, but it was like this crazy cool moment. It's so weird how much I want to brag about hosting Mask. I was literally at dinner the other <laughs> night with a bunch of managers, and one of them I found out went to Malibu High. That's so funny. And I said to her, as if I was saying, like, I met Mick Jagger the other night, I was like, I actually hosted Mask, the talent show. And she goes, <laughs> oh, yeah, Mask. And I was You're like, like, that's it? That, babe? I'm like, yes, the talent show. That's I it? I hosted. Yeah. You know... Sorry, this is a total aside, but this is reminding me of something that happened yesterday. I was talking to someone about the Cohen brothers. Yeah. And they said, who? And I said, huh? But you guys would just went back and forth. Yeah, I was like, what? Where? And they were like, who? And I was like, what? <laughs> I was yeah. like. What's happening? Yeah, I was like, I'm, I don't know. My brain like glitched. I don't anyway, that was weird. But it's No, that is weird. It's like the I don't know. When you when you expect a fully different reaction to someone, especially for you, you're like you want them to be like, Oh my god, you're you kidding. did. Oh my god, that's so amazing. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. No, I got none of that. Oh. Fuck but that. yeah, that was a magical, Fuck that magical manager. Time. Fuck that manager. And then I, I you know, I did I started smoking pot shortly after that. And I the first time I got high, I got really high and I was like that girl who thought she was going to die. When she got stoned. So I got stoned, met my older boyfriend, made out with him, then looked at him in the eyes and said, I'm going to die tonight. Mm. And he said, what? And I mm. said, "On you know, his older friends were like, you need to take this girl home. So he drove me to my house. 
He was like, you're okay. You're really high. And I said, I'm going to die tonight. And then went inside, crawled into bed with my mom because I thought, I'm going to die tonight. I should say you goodbye should be, to my mom. You be yeah. With her. Cuddled her, and I was thinking all of the events in my life were leading up to tonight's death. Like, I had gone to rehab. I would healed myself. I had performed at mask. I had shown the people I was back. It was time for me to die. Mm. Couldn't believe I woke up the next day. There Couldn't you believe go. it. Can you imagine? No. I had a moment where I also thought I was going to die when I yeah. did shrooms one time. Oof, yeah. When I was, like, 15. Mm-hmm. I, I, it was awful. But I also had another experience where I – did feel like I was going to die while smoking pot because my friends and I thought it'd be really funny to smoke, to put on a, a, a um, like snorkel mask. And actually smoke like, pot that way. Yeah, like put on the mask with the little like, and then we'd put, we'd take foil, yeah. put it at the top, yeah. poke holes in it, and then light, and then like inhale through there. And I l- was dying laughing because like, you know, the, yeah. the, the, your, the goggles and whatever. And I started like choking. Oh my gosh. But then I couldn't breathe because oh I'm like in the, ma- I'm in the goggles and I can't breathe. I'm like, like and, I, and I coughed and the pot went everywhere. And all my friends were so upset that I fucking wasted the pot. Yeah. Meanwhile. You're dying. I'm dying. I'm such an addict that you describing this made me immediately think, God, that sounds like so much fun. Like they should actually um, commission bongs to look that way. I was like the kind of kid who was like, I was smoking those like 10 foot bongs. Oh, same. So like to- Roar bongs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Delphs, love, like yeah. love getting on a chair for one of those puppers. Yeah. I, had- I have a photo of myself saved <laughs> where um, my friend who uh-huh. I used to smoke so much pot with in high school uh-huh. and we used to drive around singing, hey. Yeah, <laughs> and he drove a Wearing yellow big magician bug. Hats. Yeah, yeah, basically, and we would play it on repeat. Mm-hmm. And one time we were so high we got pulled over. Yeah, because we were going thirteen miles yes. an hour. Correct, correct. Um, but I thought it would be funny when I visited my friend years later, post high school. Uh huh. And I can't smoke pot anymore because I get way too paranoid. Yeah. And my friend was like, oh, my God, you know what I got from storage? And by the way, my friend is now a very successful doctor. Sure. I said, what? He said, I got out my Illadelph. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit. Pulled it out. We hit the bong. And I do have photos of it on my phone that I will share with you. Okay? I um. Here we are. Smoking wow. His bong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then here's my face afterward. She looks like someone actually made a meme. Like, um, I look like my eyes are like, made uh, of, like, marbles. Stone girl. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, it looks like the Leah Michelle like, doesn't know how to read meme. So the the day after this, the morning after, uh-huh. I wake up, no pants, yeah. no underwear, yeah. turtleneck on, mouth full <laughs> of granola. I um, woke up <laughs> once with my shirt covered in peanut butter like Winnie the Pooh because I had eaten out of a tub of peanut butter with my paws and then wiped it on my shirt to just go to sleep. (laughs) I was really like that. I woke up once, opened a drawer and saw the rind of a slice of brie cheese in there because I'd eaten it (laughs) like a piece of pie. I did have, there was one kid at my school, got, I think about his parents from time to time thinking, how did this happen? They named their son (laughs) Why is famous is because he was smoking at a bong once. He's one of those kids that don't really get out a lot to parties. He smokes out of a bong once and um, it's, you know, almost done. And uh, his friend goes, oh, just kill it, meaning smoke the rest of the pot. (laughs) Smiles, knocks back the bong water like a drink and drinks it. I'll think about that to the day I die. Legend. I will. I've been I've pitched that as a joke for more things than I'm just trying to get that as a to be a part of cinema. I want to fuck him. No, you don't. I'll show you a picture later. Okay. Oh my god. Wait. You just you just flashed the time to me. We need to move. I mean, like I I could talk. We could sit here and talk all day. I feel like we have very kindred experiences. We do. Yeah. Um. Oh my god. Knock knock knock. Is that a door knock guy here? Why? Yes, it is. We are in the high school guidance counselor's office, and I am your high school guidance counselor. Also, shout out to the listener in Pittsburgh this past weekend who came up to me and said, "Thank you for changing it, changing the knock." Because I would get scared with the real <laughs> knock. And I thank you for changing it. So this one's for you, doll. Okay. Now in this segment of the show, 
you get to rectify a wrongdoing oh of, my gosh. of your high school oh my gosh. past. You get to say fuck Oof. you to someone. You get to apologize. You you get to heal whatever residual high school trauma you carry with you. Oh my gosh, this is so interesting. Okay. I'm going to go out to Mr. Carrier, who was my English teacher. He was the kind of guy who he showed us, you know, all catch on the ride, changed our lives. He got really mad at me when I um, went with my uh, 20-year-old boyfriend to have off-campus lunch on a day we were explicitly not allowed to have off-campus lunch. Where did you go to the country, Mark? We absolutely did. Love it. And I was there with a bunch of, you know, stoners in their 20s. I was this, like, 17-year-old girl. And he was mad at me. He was so mad at me. He came and said, get your ass up. Get out of here. Get to school. I was so mortified. Still, when I remember it, I get mortified. And I have to tell Mr. Carrier that I understand why he was so mad. He was mad because he didn't want to see his favorite student. It's not a big deal, but he did like my writing a lot. He wants to see his favorite student out there with some like rando teens who are mm-hmm. still hanging out with high school girls. They weren't teens. They were I mean, 20s. random uh, adult men who are mm-hmm. hanging out with high school girls. He really just wanted the best for me. And I was so embarrassed. I don't think Mr. Carrier should have, you know, talked to me that way. But he later apologized. Mm. And... um. I wish that I had um, – I think that if you are the 16-year-old me out there, being a bad girlfriend to your 21-year-old boyfriend, 20-year-old boyfriend, it's time to look around and have some bad high school sex. Yeah. Maybe you shouldn't be having such good sex No, you really school. shouldn't. Really? It will, it will, actually, I advise against it. It is technically illegal. Yes. But um, – For the law, <laughs> for future you, because you don't want to be like sucking and fucking your yeah. – Someone when you're like in your 40s and be like, God, I wish I was fucking that guy I fucked when I was 16. Never. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Okay. Well, I say. And you know what? I have to add a note to that. Yeah. Add. He had a PT Cruiser. <laughs> what color was it? Oof, God, I forget. It was like maroon or something. Okay. I was going to say my friend's mom drove one that was maroon. And I have a theory that they only make two colors, maroon and the woody <gasps> one. Like, I feel like they only make those two. My cousin drove a Woody one. I was, like, so young and still old enough to be like, that's a piece of shit car that we're having – consistently having sex in. PT Cruisers are disgusting. The ugliest cars I think that the country has ever made. Who – was it Chrysler? Was it a Chrysler? Hard to say. That is a sin against humanity, that car. That person is sick and twisted. The designer of that car should be (laughs) – Literally on a list, like on a watch list, because that car is a threat to humanity. It really is. It really is. And it's crazy. And when I see it now, if you're like a PT Cruiser enthusiast. Get help. There's a problem. There's that, something Like up. I'm, I'm calling, I'm calling someone reporting. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. Um, well, look, I think your teacher... Here's you loud and clear. He's listening. He's yeah. He's listening. And you know, you you see now what he was really doing. I see. And you his would heart. probably do the same if you were a teacher. I yeah, I mean, my fear of confrontation prevents a lot of stuff like that. I would probably let the kids do whatever they wanted. Mm. Just like I plan to do with my own children someday. Mm. But um, but yes, I understand where his heart was. And it was in a good place. It was in a good place. Tevi, do we have a classmates corner today? We do. Um, so this is from Julia. She says, Hey, Greta and guests, longtime listener, first time caller. My name is Julia and I'm class of 2013. This podcast has really opened up real pockets of high school trauma that are so cathartic to relive and process. In that vein, I wanted to just give a real big fuck you to my best friend, <laughs> sophomore year of high school at the at this horrible Catholic school I went to. She bought weed for my older brother, then got caught smoking it in the bathroom at school. Then she went full narc, told the administration who she bought the weed from, and got my brother kicked out of school just three months before he was about to graduate. (gasps) He had just come back from a two-year journey where he was struggling with his mental health and getting kicked out. Then having to get his GED was a real gut punch for his confidence. The bright side is that my parents let me transfer to a public school where I met a bunch of friends and was able to come out and date some hot girls. Plot twist, this former best friend later also transferred to the same public school and didn't acknowledge me or apologize for two years until we graduated. It really hurt that she did that to my brother and then was silent for years. She had been my best friend, and while her silence was rooted in her own shame, I felt deeply hurt. Anyway, love the show, and I recommend it to anyone who listens to me. Greta is a gift. Thank 
Thank you. Oh my goodness, that was lovely. Wow. That your her friend was a cunt. Her friend was a little her friend cunt. Was a real narc. I think that the best answer is, and this is for high schoolers listening to this. Even though I don't know how many high schoolers listen to this, if you're listening to this and you get caught with pot, and they say, "Where'd you get this?" You just say, "I don't know." What is this? Yeah. So what is this? Yeah. Who planted this on me? Yeah. I'm a being lie framed. can go a long way. Yeah. And I feel like people forget that lying is totally okay. I I think a lot of I, I say this a lot. People forget that like lying's bad, lying's bad. Lying can be good. <laughs> okay. Try it. Try it. I mean, they do say that if you lie, you have a higher IQ than the average person. I mean, I think the real villain here is the None school. other than Ronald Reagan himself and his war on <laughs> drugs. Marijuana is like the best medicine out there for anything you do. I always say I don't miss drinking, don't miss drugs. I can't believe I used to do cocaine. That's so embarrassing. It's like the dumbest drug alive. What I miss is smoking a joint first thing, smoking a joint last thing. Mm-hmm. I love marijuana. And I always say what pisses me off about marijuana ha- like being the thing that I, I wasn't supposed to have when I was a kid, but alcohol literally being something that was available to me since I was like 11 years old, is that think about all the mistakes that you've made that are actually kind of bad drinking. Think about the mistakes you made when like you go to sleep with well, granola in your mouth. Well, weed is arguably way safer and better for kids to be ingesting than alcohol. Like, but you get self-reflection out of this drug. You get I, literal self-reflection. I also just like... I was a huge stoner in high yeah, school same. as well. And I feel like in hindsight, my mom was like maybe kind of relieved that I was just like such a pothead. I didn't really start drinking a lot until my junior and senior years. Yeah, same. Um, But I would also just like to say the best friend was an arc. I would have been really fucking hurt by that too. But also like – High schools need to reform their punishments. Like there's – and I hope that this has changed, you know, that was almost 10 years ago and I hope that this has changed. But like when you're dealing with a kid that is about to graduate from high school, you have the ability to like ruin that kid's life. It's wild. And I just think that that's also irresponsible and negligent of the administration – it's of crazy. the school to do that. It's crazy. I think a lot, too, about the the high stakes that high school was. And the high stakes for the most part college. College felt a little less like high stakes. But the last years of high school, getting into the right college felt like such huge stakes. And what I'll say is that unless you, you know, my friend, I also had a stoner friend who's now a doctor at UCLA. Unless you're going into law or you know, medicine, even if you are, I was like, this is not a big deal. Go to fucking SMC, Harvard by the Sea. I'd rather have a doctor perform a surgery on me while they were stoned than drunk. I mean, like, I don't want either, but but I'm just saying if you had to choose, I'm going stoned over drunk. At least stoned, some people can be, like, really laser focused when they're stoned and, like, become more precise. Drunk, no. As long as they have, like, high sativa, like, as long as it's a head high, (laughs) not a body high. Not an indica situation. Yeah, no, if they're drunk, they'll just, like, draw on my face. Well, you know what I say, sativa sativa surgery only. (laughs) My doctor's amazing. He smokes sativa. He smokes sativa. <laughs> um, he has a fellowship. He did my face. Um, he did my face. Um, wow. Thank you so much for writing in and sharing. Please, if you have something you want to get off your chest and talk to the high school guidance counselor about, that is me. Email us at seniorsuperlativespod at gmail.com with the subject line classmates corner. <sighs> now, if you could go back in time. Oh, someone's getting a call. Someone's getting a call. Is it Not Hollywood? Not to brag. Is it's it Hollywood? Um, potential spam. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I got to know if you could go back in time and give your high school self any advice, what would it be? Um, I would say that, gosh, you know what I would say is that this, the, my friends in high school still are some of the funniest people. And I would say just like work even harder to keep in touch with all of them mm. because I'm going to a wedding soon. It's one of my high school friends is marrying another one of my high school friends. Wow. They met up in Hawaii during the pandemic and fell in love. And a bunch of my other high school friends. And they've all done a pretty good job staying in contact. I've always been on the peripheral because I've just been the girl in a romantic comedy who's very work obsessed. And Mm -hmm. now that I'm coming out of the woodwork a little bit, I think, God, I wish that 
I have kept in touch every single year just to see, check in with everyone, see how they're doing. But I was focused on dick and yeah. money. Yes. You know, which I don't Two necessarily very powerful regret things. either. But yeah. Um, we briefly glazed over prom. I need yeah. to know what did you wear to your prom and how did you lose? <sighs> okay. So I would always run as a joke, looks to camera. I ran for homecoming queen with Martin Tolentino, who's sort of like one of my gay best friends. Um, he, uh, we, we were runner up from homecoming queen. We shouldn't really feel any, didn't really feel like anything because our football team sucked. And so no one even really went to homecoming. Then prom comes up. I say, we've got to run again. He says, of course. We run for prom queen and king. At the same time, <laughs> runs. Mm. I want you to go on Instagram and find because <laughs> you will be shocked. Right now. You, it will really give you is a she glimpse. she public? She is certainly public. And she, I, last time I checked, it's like 10K followers. Is she related to James? No. I don't think so. <laughs> has the blondest hair I've ever <laughs> Yeah. I think I she, found her. She may no. Nope. She may have a different name now that she's gotten married. But I'm running against. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yep. 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 Oh yeah, she, there was no way you were gonna win. I was not gonna win. I mean, Angelina Jolie herself would lose next to. <laughs> and wow. <laughs> shout out. I mean, so we'll stop saying her name. We I, need to we need to bleep her name a million times. Okay, we need to bleep her name a million times, but. The the we can we I I see the producers in the house. Are you guys seeing what we're seeing? She's uh, it's ridiculous. It's unhinged. This girl once I saw her off campus lunch. I spoke of off campus lunch, and she was in a bad mood. And I said, "What's up?" And she said, "I just saw a girl in a Porsche with pink rims who had blonder hair than I have." And that's devastating. She said, "I'm gonna go home." Mm -hmm. She went home for that day because it was rough. And she should. She, I ran as a joke. I don't even think she knew she was running. She was that hot. She was like, I'm running for prom queen who put my name in. She wins. I smile back the tears and go home. Mm. I didn't even hook up with my, like we made out, but I was like, I don't even want to have sex with this guy. Like my mojo is out. I'm not feeling myself yeah. right now. What did you wear? I wore, um, I have like 34A tits, so I can wear kind of like low cut things mm. and um, my like nips will be seen a few times, Love but it. that's totally fine. I wore a like lower cut dress that I would, it like went down to my belly button and like one drunk mom came up and like put her like hand down. Ew, like ran it down <laughs> your chest? She just like ran it down my chest being like, you are wearing something down to here. Um, Really fun. What so color was it? It was um, teal-ish. A teal is a teal color is a classic. you cannot wear after high school. No. But that was its I had a teal period. sack dress. I had a teal short sack dress. To that bring is it the back perfect the beginning. color for a sack dress it is, is teal. Yeah. Um. Wow. Well, you're prom queen in my book. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you. You're that welcome. does you mean win something. You win here. You win here on this pod. Thank you. Um. Gosh, and I mean – our final question of the pod, I guess I guess we're at the final question. Wow. Um, did you have a senior superlative? Um, I was funniest. Love it. I was almost life of the party, but it went to this other hot girl. Damn. When I say other hot girl, I don't put myself in that same category. She was really hot. <laughs> Malibu hot. She was she was Malibu hot. Yeah. Like huge titties, perfect face. Gosh, I'm just thinking about it right now. Extensions? I don't think I think extensions were before. I mean, we're after our time. Mm. We we were all natural. Mm -hmm. Love yeah. it. Low rise jean, one inch. Oh zipper. my gosh, the low rise jean. Once my guy friend said, Carolina, we can fully see your pubes. Yeah, like that's how low you're going. And you say it's good. Were you a free city wearer? I I didn't have that much cash. Yeah, but they're, yeah, they're, that was all those, over the place. That was the first sweatpant. That really, I remember. Like I got a free city hoodie on oh, yeah. sale at Scoop. In New York City, if anybody remembers that. I do. I got it. I got it on sale when my boyfriend at the time, I was a junior. He was a senior. We were in New York going to see Daft Punk. Oh, my gosh. Bringing me back. And it was raining. We are the same age. Yeah. And I, uh, no, imagine if I was lying about us being the same age. <laughs> You're but right. We lying, are the I same age. Like, I was like, well, when I went to see, <laughs> when I went to see the Doobie Brothers with my high school boyfriend. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, whatever. Needless to say, 
This has been the most fun, fun, fun day of my life. Thank you so much. <laughs> this has been the most fun day of my life. This has trumped all of my high school fun. I thought I peaked in high school, but I peaked just now. In this, in this, yeah. in this hour in this, long recording. In this couch. Yeah. I love it. I peaked all over this couch. Carolina, what a nice name. Greta Titleman. There not you go. Titleman, not Titleman. As I've been reading your um name for the past three years. Um only three. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just got into comedy. I just huh. got into comedy three years only ago. Only three. Okay. Well, where can all my listeners listen to you? <laughs> you can find me on True Romance. It is a podcast about love, relationships, reality television. Um, you can hear more Hyman stories like I know you guys are going to be looking for. Um, you can find us on iHeartRadio wherever you get your podcasts. And I'm at Carolina Rose Barlow. Yep, on um, Instagram. Okay, sorry. My name is Greta Rose Titleman. You know what? The one thing about Rose is, is they love squeezing in between your names like that. Yeah, and, and my sister-in-law, middle name Rose as well. That's interesting. That's interesting. Are you Jewish? I'm not. Hmm. But we don't know. I say... Isn't that interesting? Um, and okay, true romance. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Um, okay, I have a few little uh, homework notes for my classmates. Number one, if you're in New York City and you love me, <laughs> as I know all of you do, come see me live, November ninth. November 9th, I'm running my hour as part of New York Comedy Festival at the Jane Hotel. If you come, I will give you a hug. And you'll have the best time of your life. And you should buy tickets. You can go to my website, GrettaTitleman.com, and buy tickets there. I'll also post it again on my Instagram. Um, that's number one. Number two, write into us for Classmates Corner. I already said that. Number three, five stars, five stars only. Number four, that's it. Subscribe. Subscribe. And thank you again for coming on the pod. Thank you, Greta. Thank you all for listening. And until next week, stay cool, never change. Ciao. That was a HeadGum Podcast. 